so before we get into today's episode, I need to briefly acknowledge uh, there's some big Final Fantasy VII remake news that happened just a few days ago. There's a PS5 version of this game coming out later this year in June called Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade. And on top of it having all the fancy faster loading times and better graphics and textures, which, by the way, they were cowards for not showing how much better Cloud's apartment door gets in the PS5 version. I really gotta know if that <laughs> fucking texture is fixed. But the big thing here is that there's going to be DLC for the PS5 version coming out at the same time. Uh, that is, it's new story DLC. Uh, thankfully, it looks like it's all stuff that is absolutely fine and possibly even intended to be played after you beat the main story of the game. So because of this, we are not going to be pausing the Let's Play or anything. We're just going to keep on going as normal. Um, I'm sorry, these episodes were recorded weeks in advance, and I made the mistake of theorizing about potential PS5 upgrade announcements coming soon in this episode, and it's all really outdated now, so apologies for that, but the we should be finished with this, the main story of this Let's Play around the same time, or maybe just a week or so before Intergrade comes out. But as soon as I am finished playing Intergrade and I know it well enough, we will continue the Let's Play and cover everything new in Intergrade. And one more thing, we are going to go back and check out the alternate quest line for Chapter 9, the Wall Market portion of the game, as well as seeing everyone's alternate dresses. We're not going to see that right now because it takes a lot of work. I have to go back to earlier save files and play through decent chunks of the game so that there's enough different decisions being made to get everyone their different dresses and all that stuff. So instead of going back and recording all that right now while I'm also still trying to record the main plot of the game, we are going to save that for after we're done with the main story, and we will check that stuff out after Intergrade has come out so that we can run through that section with the nicer looking graphics. There were also some mobile games for Final Fantasy VII Remake announced at the same time. There's a, a mobile-based Final Fantasy VII Remake Battle Royale, where you're playing as Shinra soldiers. Uh, that seems nuts. There's a remake demake. I don't know entirely what to make of that. It looks like it could be cool. It also looks like it could be like a gotcha game. Not entirely sure, but I'm going to reserve any judgments on that stuff until it comes out. Um, and anyways, enough of me rambling. Uh, let's just move on. Let's, just, let's go back to the train graveyard. Sugar, ba 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 ba, oh, honey, honey, ba 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 ba. Yeah. I don't know what to do. Help! <laughs> Let go of me. Release me. <laughs> but but, Cloud, you're my candy girl, and you've got me loving you. Can't even hand, hand, handle one girl liking me, let alone two. <gasps> what was that? Look, over there. Besides, we just got to the best part of the haunted escape room. <laughs> Great visual effects. This room is way, way too big for me to start looking for combination locks. It's going to take forever. Oh, God. Is there a time limit on this? We could be here all day. Found you. Hey, can we talk just for a bit? I hope it's a hedgehog pie. <gasps> dead kids, dead kids. It's dead kids. You called it. This is an episode of History Honeys now. There's dead kids. Huh? Huh? <sighs> Damn, girl, you just walked into a creepypasta. <laughs> Where's the realistic blood, though? I don't see any realistic blood. It's just ghost. No cool fantasy names. It's just a ghost. Now, with the power of PlayStation 5, we can bring hyper-realistic blood. Oh, yeah. It's a ghost! Woo! I love that they're just... They're ghosts in the way that, like, a kid putting a, a, a white sheet over them is a ghost. Like, <laughs> they're pretty cute. So, these ghosts, uh, when you start hitting them with one type of attack, they will put up a barrier that nullifies that, and then you gotta start hitting, hitting them with the opposite type. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so hit them with too many physical attacks. They will put up a shield barrier that makes them immune to physical. So you got to hit him with magic. Uh, 
the magic barrier they put up isn't like the, the one that just reduces magic damage. It's actually a new uh, status effect called Reflect. So if you shoot magic at them when they have that barrier up, your spell will bounce off of them and come back and hit you instead. Ah, uh, yes, the rubber glue weakness. Yeah. They have a move here called Possess, where they will just randomly possess one of your party members and make them just randomly do an ability on your entire party. So, uh, Aerith has the, uh, the materia on her that lets her cast a sleep spell, so there's a chance if she got possessed, she would put the whole party to sleep. That seems bad. Don't do that. Don't let that yeah, happen. Yeah, it's, it's bad. Don't, don't get possessed by ghosts. It's a, a rule for life. <laughs> I'm Zach Baggins, and I want to tell you, do not get possessed by ghosts. <laughs> Go on. My favorite Final Fantasy character, Zach Baggins. Sorry, but I gotta... <laughs> off a bit. Yeah. It's you. That thing's dangerous. Did you hear about know, possession and sleep spells so. and... <laughs> Aww, that ghost gets bullied by the other ghosts. Mm-hmm. What the...? But Aerith, I need to send this child's soul to hell! <laughs> where it belongs! Hey, you don't know. You could be sending it to heaven. You don't know. It's true. Yeah, I don't know. <gasps> what if we put the ghost in the Mako? Is that good? Light live stream and stuff. I, this yeah. is probably Mako's fault. Shut down the reactor so we stop getting Run! kid ghosts. You okay? Yeah. Oh, thanks, Cloud. You saved us. Gonna need to find another way through. You can jump 40 feet high. <laughs> the problem is Aerith. She cannot jump 40 feet high. You can backflip. Come on. Now, Cloud could jump 40 feet high with Aerith just onto it, holding onto his back, but he would be way too embarrassed to, to yeah, allow that to happen. We've we've hit our, our uh, personal contact quota. There's no more yeah, touching. No more. So yeah, because there's always the chance that Aerith could get possessed and put everybody to sleep, I'm putting headbands on as many people as I can. Mm -hmm. uh, I found out via the comments the reason why the headband is the thing that uh, yes. protects against sleep, and it, that is the, the Japanese thing of like kids cramming and studying for, for tests and staying awake by trying to psych themselves up by tying a little headband around their head. <laughs> And I, I guess there's an element of tying it so tight that you yes. can't fall asleep because it's too uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. Which the instant like I read that, I was like, oh shit, that makes sense. I've seen that. I've, I've seen that in anime and, and other <laughs> media before. Yeah. We have not got to that part yet in, in Dogs Must Die. I, I don't know. Oh yeah, it's eventually. <laughs> Zephyr's cram school. <laughs> So yeah, I'm switching Cloud to the Buster Sword just to be a little more even between physical and magic, just because a lot of the stuff you fight in the train graveyard is a little more dependent on magic-based stuff. No need mm -hmm. to worry. Get him! And again, I just love this move. It's the, it's the little bounce in place that's the best. Yeah. Hang back. See ya. And I like that uh, it can hit multiple enemies if they're they're grouped together enough. Okay, there's no combo lock on this one, so I don't think it's part of the puzzle. <laughs> is, there a, is there a sticker? I, I just want to see the sticker to be sure. Yeah, is there black tape on this? If there's a fucking sink fetus in this train, I am out of here. I am done. <laughs> I think we might be lucky and it's just Jigsaw. <laughs> Would you like to play a game? It's called Final Fantasy VII Remake. 
Your punishment for asking for this game for 20 years is that it's multiple games now. <laughs> That's not funny, you know. Guess the crane's up there. The smoothest animations, the highest res textures, except on one door <laughs> and one man, and you will never forget them. <laughs> Tetsuya Nomura will add one new character that the Pyrrhus won't like. <laughs> it's not working. There's no power coming through. I wonder if this is another prank. Someone might be messing with the power supply to make us run around. Can you handle the terror of seeing Sephiroth within the first 10 minutes of Final <laughs> Fantasy VII? It's not exactly how you remembered. Oh no. Are you ready to play a game with better combat and more mechanics than the original that is tighter balanced and has much more progression and customization to the characters, but isn't turn-based? <laughs> that is a, uh, uh, there is a segment of people that are not happy with the remake because the combat is not turn-based. Uh, and like, can I can understand like, you know, not liking the change in like, just general pacing of the combat, but like, I see people say, like, man, they just made it into a brainless button masher action game with, with no death. And there is literally more death and mechanics to this than the original game has. <laughs> I think there's a lot of people who do not remember, like, the combat in the original 7 is fun. I like it a lot. The materia system is still great in the original, too. But, like, it is a game with a relaxing difficulty where it's like you got to pay attention just enough to like heal your party members but a lot of the time you can just select the attack command and then heal when you need to and like you're good for most of the game i mean what, whatever your feelings on the way this game has been translated and, and remade mm -hmm. uh i'm just glad that uh jigsaw isn't trying to put a bolt through my testicles anymore <laughs> I, those, fucking th few. Those traps were not fun for me, let me tell you. <laughs> uh, we got this gothic bangle from Hot Topic, by the way. Uh, pretty okay defense, pretty good magic defense, and it's got three slots. Mm -hmm. Nothing linked, though. There's nothing more magical than hanging out in the mall with your friends. It's true. Yeah, it's, I don't entirely buy the argument of, ah, the action ruins the, the tactical depth of the turn-based combat when this game <laughs> is, is far more in-depth than the original ever was. Like, aside from, like, late-game setups you could do in the original game, like, this game just has more to it. Just wait until uh, more and more uh, come out and they keep layering on uh, um, <laughs> more mechanics. Like, okay, this attack does 125% damage if you're standing to the left of your enemy, unless the enemy is left-handed. <laughs> right, right. I, I do expect that they're going to add more mechanics to later games just because, you know, to keep it feeling fresh. But, like, there are things I can imagine they can do that wouldn't really overcomplicate too much. One thing I thought would maybe be in this original game, but wasn't, was the idea of, like, combo attacks, where, like, if one party member uses one certain attack and then you follow it up with another type of attack from a different party member, that does bonus stuff or something. Mm -hmm. Like, because 15 already kind of had that mechanic in a way, where you could, you could link up different attacks together. And fucking, whoops, I bounced this fire spell back at myself. <laughs> um... You can't do it in this game. There's, as far as I remember, there is no way to get the cast to reflect status effect on yourself in this first game. Ooh. Um, only enemies can do it, and it's pretty rare. Only a couple enemies in this game do cast, can cast reflect on themselves. But uh, 
in other Final Fantasies, there was always a situation like, what if both me and enemies have reflect on each other and we cast a, a spell at, our, at the other person? Like, mm -hmm, what the fuck mm -hmm. happens? And the answer is... Spells can only bounce off reflect barriers a certain amount of times, but if it bounces off an enemy, then bounces off you with reflect, it gets doubled in power. Like, every time the spell bounces, it gets stronger and stronger. <laughs> it just ping-pongs until it finally hits somebody and does a ton of extra damage. Come on. And there's also, like, the fun strategy of, like, I want to deal... I need to heal myself a lot, and we both have reflect on ourselves. I will cast heal on myself so it bounces off me, bounces off the enemy, and then heals me for way more than it normally would. Uh -huh. It was a pretty fun thing to ping-pong spells like that, but... Can't do that in this game, unfortunately. Maybe the next game. There's also some, uh... So we're getting closer to a year since this game released. Uh, it came out, like, early April last year. Uh, and the one-year exclusivity is going to run out soon, which makes it seem like, hey, this game's going to, you know, get released for PC and Xbox sooner rather than later, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a Japanese concert Do you think going on soon for this game. More in here? Where uh, like... some of the directors are going to be... like They have, like, some pre-recorded message that they're going to air before the concert starts, which they have done for other Square Enix concerts like Kingdom Hearts. And usually mm -hmm. those have some type of announcement of like, hey, a, a Game of the Year edition with DLC is coming out or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And the voice actresses for both Tifa and Jesse have been apparently in the VO booth in the past couple of months. And there was an interview a couple months ago where uh, it was revealed that there was an entire chapter that got cut out of the game because they didn't have time for it that was going to take place around Chapter 7 or 8 uh, when Cloud is with uh, running around with Aerith, where it goes back to seeing what Tifa is doing with Avalanche. Ah, that'd be fun. And you would you would eventually you would see what her and Avalanche are up to during that period of time and how <laughs> Tifa eventually goes around to get her dress that she picks <laughs> for the Don Corneo <laughs> stuff. Yeah, they had to cut that stuff out for time Aww. and... Hearing that both Tifa and Jesse's voice actresses have been back in the booth makes it seem like maybe they might could be working on that as DLC. Maybe, maybe. I or would be cool with that. Recording car commercials for like or, or it car could be anything. It could be anything. I'm just imagining the paranormal investigator who's trying to record EVPs and just getting a whole lot of battle chatter. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, my, my EMF reader is spiking. Oh, someone someone cast a thunder spell. Oh, Never someone mind. said a th yeah. Somebody said a thunder-related pun. Damn it! This is not <laughs> what I wanted. And there's also been recently uh, Square Enix has filed trademarks for a couple different things that while they don't have Final Fantasy in the name, their titles are extremely Final Fantasy VII related, mm. uh, which mm -hmm. make people think they're either doing spin-off games or it's the name of DLC they are working on for Seven Remake or something like that. Pl plausible, could be, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's. Uh, I'll be curious if that announcement, the 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 message at the concert, has anything new announced there or not. Ice cream truck, go, go, <gasps> get the Ooh. ice cream. Go, go, ice go, cream. go. Here I go. Right behind you. Here goes. <laughs> go on. Cut. All set. <laughs> there have also been some other interviews, like, confirming some random, like, tidbits of backstory and stuff. Most of which I can't bring up because it, it ties into later... <laughs> plot events in later games or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, it does seem to confirm that, like, the weird spin-off games, they do still believe to have happened, but I just <laughs> I just don't know if they're going to actually acknowledge them beyond winks and nods is the thing. Yeah, it, it's something to pick and choose from. It's it's like um old Star Wars canon. Yeah. Just because it doesn't count doesn't mean it didn't happen. Right. It just means a new writer hasn't referenced it yet. Yeah, there's been a couple small references to that type of stuff. There is a Japan-only cell phone prequel game called Before Crisis, where you actually played as the Turks. Ooh. You played as the Turks fighting against Avalanche. And, Ooh. uh... Ooh. Right? So, the, uh... 
there are a couple plot elements in the remake that are based on that prequel game. <laughs> like in the very first episode, when you first see Heidegger and President Shinner like watching the security footage of Cloud and Bear and everyone infiltrating the reactor, uh, uh, Heidegger says like we're still looking into seeing if these were the people who tried to assassinate you, and yeah, part of before crisis is that Avalanche tries to assassinate President Shinra, <laughs> and the idea of uh, Barrett's Avalanche being a splinter cell from a larger, older uh, group yeah, of Avalanche yeah. members—that is also an idea that came from that prequel game. Okay, and the original game, Barrett and everyone else was just Avalanche, and there was nobody else. Mm hmm. I like that idea. I, I, I think do like that idea, too. That's a good too. thing to take from something that may or may not count in its entirety. Yeah, the I really, I was really happy that they added, like, the, the Splinter Cell stuff, because I also think that just makes Barrett and their group of Avalanche more interesting, that they have a different view on, on how to accomplish Avalanche's goals. Mm-hmm. Um... Yeah, we're, we're setting up a new build for Tifa here. Uh, we're actually going back to her leather gloves because they're a, a, a little bit more even keeled. She can actually do some magic with, with this. Yeah, and, and they match the goth look a little better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're giving her the synergy materia so that if anyone else is casting magic, she's going to throw out a fire spell. Um, give her some poison materia as well. Um because we, we just haven't used much magic with Tifa at all yet, and we're just heading into a lot of stuff that needs magic. Mm -hmm. um, also giving Aerith here that warding materia we picked up uh, last episode. We're going to link that up to the binding materia so that she will uh, both sleep and silence will last a lot less or 25% or less. And we can stack that with her, her magic crystal <laughs> so that those status effects run out pretty fast. Cause, mm -hmm. cause, uh, Aerith will never shut up. <laughs> you yes. can't make her. Uh huh. She won't do it. <laughs> Last person who tried to make her, uh, uh, stop talking, got a chair to the face. That's all I'm saying. I really hope the next game just adds a joke weapon for her that is just the folding chair. Mm -hmm. What is it you want, spirit? Chicken nuggets. <laughs> Choco nuggets, please. Choco nuggets. <laughs> Materia pops. Coming to get you? Chadley must die. <laughs> I want an extra large potion with those choco nugs, please and thank you. <laughs> and the thing is, all these ghosts have really strong opinions on different models of train. <laughs> oh no. Are, are all the ghost kids kids who have died via train? Mm hmm, mm hmm. Got run over by them or fell off of them or crushed by them? They were trying to, to get some really dynamic train footage and got run over. Oh man. So we got a ghoul. Hey, ghoul. How you doing? Hey. I like the design for this guy. He's a new boss, was not a part of the original game. If we uh, scan him here. Uh, he works kind of like the, the normal ghost. Also, he's got like a little crown. He's like the... Uh, oh, uh, look at he's that. He's got a bone crown. I, yeah, I was going to say, it looks like it's made of some sort of beastly pelvis. <laughs> Don't like that. So the ghoul can switch between corporeal and incorporeal forms. Uh, corporeal, got him with physical attacks. He's immune to magic during that. And the opposite when he goes into his incorporeal form. Different attacks based in different forms. Uh, physical, he just picks up and throws shit at you and screams a so lot. <laughs> if he screams, uh -huh, uh -huh. anyone in the vicinity will get stunned for a little bit. So he screams real loud. So, yeah, 
is, I'm seeing myself in this guy a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Just throw shit and scream. That's how I get what I want, baby. Let's choke him, Nugs. <laughs> throw a temper tantrum till I get him. I want to go to Pequod's and I want to go right now, Mom. Oh man, I've only been to Pequod's once with the, the, some developers from Jackbox, and I want to go again. I don't. I live a lot closer than I did before. Okay, maybe next when we, I can actually visit you, we can go to yeah. Pequod's. Yes. They burn the crust and the pepperoni a little bit, but it's good. Yeah, in a good way. <laughs> So, yeah, when he's in uh, incorporeal form, uh, he's got a couple new moves here. Sometimes he'll send out a detached pair of ghostly bone arms to grab ooh, you. Ooh. And whoever he grabs, he will slowly float over to reattach to those arms, and then he'll start sucking the health out of you. Oh, that's an unfriendly ghost. But if you can hit him with a lot of magic uh, in ghost form, he'll get pressured. This, this ghost is kind of hard to fight your first time just because he's just... He's got a lot of stuff to stun you with. Yeah, yeah, you got... You're, you're, stop stun locking the, the lady who can move at super speed, please. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, yeah, if he ever grabs you with those extra pair of arms, he, like, the amount of health he sucks out of you is a lot. And I also just like this, I like this fight because uh, it does a thing that a lot of other games, if it tried to do it, it would just be really janky, and that is the fact that it can lift up these random bits of the environment, throw them at you, and not have you accidentally clip halfway through a thing and just, uh-oh, uh -oh. and grab. Uh -oh. Like, there's never an issue of accidentally clipping through an object he has just lift and causing you to, like, wildly ragdoll across the environment or something like yeah, yeah. a lot of other games would, would do, probably. You think this ghost hangs out with uh, that that Super Metroid one, Phantom? Oh yeah. You think they're pals? They they've never met, but they could probably get along. Yeah. I mean, they could shop at the same store. I'm pretty sure that that cloak would fit. I'm waiting. So in the second phase, on top of all the stuff it was already doing. Uh, it will summon uh, big blue flames on the ground that will just slowly move across the ground, and if they hit you, it's not like it does constant like burning damage or anything, but it just fucking explodes. <laughs> and it'll just launch you up into the air, and it does a good amount of damage to you, too. The ghoul gets a new uh, boss fight theme for the remake. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a, a new song. And uh, I know some people go like, ah, some of the strong songs in this game are too over-orchestrated, but I am a sucker for an orchestra and a choir <laughs> making things seem really epic. It's, mm -hmm. uh, I am a simple man. Give me a choir and an orchestra. And, <laughs> and a big old ghost to fight. And a big ghost to fight. Big angry ghost. That is a combination I am all for. The ghost he can also poison, by the way. You should always be able to poison ghosts. So what if their body doesn't have, like, a metabolism or whatever? <laughs> you think every poison attack is feeding someone, like, a, a, a little cyanide cake treat? No. It's magic, damn it. Yeah, this is magic fucking poison. It's magic. Don't give up. It's not actual poison. It's magic that mimics poison. I don't think that's real wind you're throwing. Yeah. Like, is being a hitman in the world of Final Fantasy VII easy? Because, like, the poison spell always hits, it can't miss, and you can cast it through walls. Can you lock onto somebody <laughs> in a closed door murder and just poison somebody that way? That's why Avalanche wasn't able to kill President Shinra. They didn't have any casters with him. Oh, shit. It's also probably, you know, he probably has an elite guard that can just throw antidotes on him the instant they see green goo forming around his person. <laughs> oh, shit, that's a poison spell. Antidote, antidote, antidote. Yeah, they got a contingency in place. That was fun. All 
this time, you were waiting for someone to come and play with you. Fuck that, you're dead. You're okay. extra dead now. <laughs> what are you talking about? <sighs> come on, let's get back to the crane. For some reason, th this room, especially in like the cutscene where Cloud is messing with the, the terminal to get the power back on, and the, and the lights are still on, this room reminds me of the scene in Metal Gear Solid 4 where Otacon is helping Snake in like Shadow Moses to turn the power back on. There's something <laughs> about the layout of the room that just feels like mm -hmm. that room. <laughs> or not Shadow Moses, uh, you know what I mean. Shadow Moses Island, yes. It's been a little bit since I thought about Metal Gear. I had to, I had to think. <laughs> So we got a new materia from the ghoul. Yeah. The subversion materia. Oh man, that, that ghoul was so subversive. <laughs> Put the subversion materia in, in your hot topic bracelet, damn it. Oh no. So if you pair the subversion materia with the uh the uh materia that lets you resist status effects, it will actually uh protect you a little bit against uh, any instant death moves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's pretty nice. But the subversion materia gives you spells to strip away buffs off of enemies. So it's sort of like a deconstruction of the magic system if you think about it. It's, uh, Whoa, it's yeah. a more mature kind of materia. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want it to be your first materia of the genre, but eventually oh, no. you're going to really appreciate it. I wonder, maybe they're the ones who were caught. Can we just drop the hole? What if they're trapped here and can't leave? You know, af after you've gotten a couple materia under your belt, then you can get into the really good ones where they can say fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Shin materia. Hell yes. Yeah. Hey, Aerith, why don't you just try, like, praying? You do that, right? You, you do the praying thing? I don't know if praying is enough to send ghosts in this. If we're Final Fantasy X, then absolutely. <laughs> it's worth a shot. It is. You know, I never tried it out, actually. I should, I should give it a shot later. But, um, like in a, a decent amount of, like, RPG systems, uh, undead enemies in Final Fantasy will be hurt by healing magic. Yeah. Because you're, you're, like, returning them back to life, but you're returning them back to zero, so that's dead, I guess. The, the logic is very gamey, but it, it's common enough. Yeah, I wonder if the ghosts get hurt when you cast healing magic on them. And if they have reflect up, who cares? Yeah. Final Fantasy VII, as well as a couple others, uh, always have a couple fun boss fights where it's like you're fighting an undead boss and you just realize like, oh, if I just throw a phoenix down on them a couple times, they just instantly die. <laughs> there is one boss fight in a later part of Seven that's not in this game that uh, it's just like, I just, I never fight them legitimately. I just throw a phoenix down on them and they die. <laughs> Big fan of the laser. Oh, I love it so much. Always looking for a chance to use the laser. It's the it's the sound, it's the pose. Yeah. It's how everybody is moving so quickly and she just sort of like floats. Yeah. Sorry, but I gotta. It's just you very rarely do you see somebody in anime or any other similar media shoot a laser and do it gracefully. Yes. You know, usually firing a laser is a big forceful act where you scream a lot. I also like, sorry, but I gotta, and then instant immolation, dead. <laughs> yeah. Again, this is why Aerith is cool. She's very chill, she's very nice and friendly, but she is absolutely willing to fire a laser at you. She's gotta. <laughs> We're through. Great. Let's head outside. 
Wait. Oh, buddy. Uh, a girl? Marlene? Is Marlene dead? Has Marlene been and dead? The kids uh -oh. that the Black Wind carries away have to live in the train graveyard forever and ever. So you have to stay far, far away from there. All right then, I will. Uh, just like Cloud, Tifa without all of her arm gear on looks nude. Look at her. <laughs> oh, you know Betty? Yesterday she went with her daddy to... to... What is she eating there? Like a little mac and cheese thing? When is Daddy coming back? Is Barrett dead? <gasps> Does Barrett Actually, know he's dead? He might not make it home tonight. <sighs> Marlene, what are you? You know, I can't imagine Aerith barefoot either. The, the boots are so central. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people have for me, <laughs> but I, I can't. What was that about? Nothing you need to worry about. Let's get going. Probably along this, the same lines as weird Mass Effect fans who have to calculate how Tali's sweat would smell. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's definitely probably a contingency of fans like that for Final Fantasy. Oh no, the title screen. <gasps> Imagine if the ghosts could leave like Final Fantasy VII Remake in their wake. Whoa. Oh, it's moving. Maybe now we can get to the other side. Turntable has been activated. Get ready to DJ somebody's wedding. Hell yes. We are family. It's a very appropriate song for the occasion if you think about it. <laughs> Good night. Now that's just on you. Uh, so this fight that happens when you're waiting for the turntable to move uh, can fucking mess you up, man. There, there's. <laughs> There's three waves of enemies here, the second being ghosts, and the third wave being, like, five or so, uh, Crip Shays, the little guys with the horns. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, they don't, like, wait for you to defeat one wave before another shows up. Like, if you just don't take, if you take too long fighting the ghosts, the Crip Shays just show up anyways. And, uh, since there's, like, five of them, even if you're, like, casting spells or, or performing ATB abilities, uh, they will just run into you and cancel you out of your moves and stun lock you and do a fuckload of damage while the ghosts are also hurting you. <laughs> this is a fight on my first playthrough. I died like twice too. It is tough. Here we go. This is the real boss right here. Yeah. Yeah. You really got to come into this fight like with a strategy and how you're gonna handle this. And uh, the first time I, I I played this game, this was. The uh, Don't overdo it. this was the moment where I had the the realization that if I had Aerith's uh, magic circle out and I had fire spells linked up to a magnify thing, I could hit all the en like three enemies at a time with double fire spells. And that's when it clicked for me, and I was just like, "Whoa, <laughs> I could do that!" Oh well, at least we got some Google medals. That's the important thing. Another thing I haven't shown, but you can do is, uh, you know, you're in the magic circle, you're casting double spells. If you have Aerith's butterfly out, that means it's also firing double shots. I wish you and the butterfly could both fire double lasers, put them all together. Oh man, if the butterfly also shot lasers. Hey, do you think these trains might still run? Could give it a try. Good call. Looks like it still works. I knew it. If a butterfly starts shooting lasers to kill things, you know that Dolly Parton has stopped fucking around. <laughs> Thanks, Ghost Tornado. Everybody good? Yeah. Huh? Hmm? Uh, 
I think that's... Plate separation code is... <sighs> Got it. Yeah, yeah, of course I do. We can drop this one thing whenever. It's just that. Tifa, are you still thinking about what Don Corneo said? <laughs> you got a death wish or something? Because I sure as shit don't. Hello. What's happening? Do we have a problem? Not really. Small arms fire from some local boys trying to defend the pillar. <laughs> more would be heroes, huh? Sending reinforcements. The more players that take the stage, the better. So that's what we are, huh? Contact me when the mission is complete. Tifa. They're really gonna drop the plate. They won't if Barrett and the others have anything to say about it. Yeah, we're gonna put all, all of our faith now? in Biggs and Wedge. <laughs> and Jesse. Please. Yeah, yeah but Jesse blows things me. up, and that's what we're trying to prevent. Okay, nah, that's true. Jesse's a liability. Oh, wouldn't it be fucked up if one of the Avalanche members was undercover for Shinra? Like if Jesse <laughs> was undercover or something, that would fuck me up. <laughs> what if Jesse's undercover in Shinra? They, they uh, have her ah. trying to blow up the plate. She's like, for once, I will not explode a thing. <laughs> Nothing in those boxes. So yes, in the original, uh, when you you go through the sewers pretty quickly, and when you come out of the manhole, you're basically in this area, and you're immediately scooting train cars around to make a path. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, the ghosts are still there in the original. Still got the ghosts. Wow! Oh, I love the Would pipes on the that? side of that. Oh, yeah. that's good. No wonder there's so many rail fans in this town. They have cool-ass trains. The, the trains are pretty fucking cool. Gotta say. Oh, whoops. Oh, that's, <laughs> whoop, whoop. <laughs> yeah, hey, Cloud, they're gonna kill everybody I know. Um, we... <laughs> We skip the potions. Stop picking the treasure up. Uh -huh. Going in. Sorry, but we're in a rush. See, we're in a rush and everything, but you're just grabbing potions. Deal with that. So it's my turn? Come on. How's this? But yeah, that scene with Marlene also new to the remake. Uh, mm -hmm. Just because in the in the original game. When you're getting up to this point, you know, it's been a much shorter period of time from the from the start of the game to here, but in the original game, it's kind of easy to forget that Marlene exists. <laughs> and and here, even though, you know, it's also been a long time since we've seen Marlene or anything. What do you think of this trick? You know, even if they hadn't added that extra scene to remind you that like, oh shit, Marlene's in Sector 7 where the plate might <laughs> fucking fall down if it gets blown up. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm glad that there's like a reminder. You gotta make it personal. It's it's not just uh, all those people that we listened to for for eight hours. Yeah. There's also one with a name. Mm -hmm. Come on. It is one of the like benefits of the remake. You know, staying in in the beginning section of the game for longer is that like yeah, there is the plot of Shinra tr trying to drop the plate on Sector Seven in the original, but because you go through the, all this stuff so fast, there if there's significantly less stakes. Yeah. Like it, yeah. it just it just feels like not as big of a deal <laughs> in the original because, you know, Sector 7 is uh, a house, an inn, a shop, and the bar, and that's mm -hmm. about it. And the train station. But but now Sector 7 is, you know, a uh, uh, Cloud's new apartment and his neighbor that's kind of Thanks. weird. And the, the weird witch <laughs> lady go. lives there, and we, yeah. we love Sector Seven. They they think we're a a, a sword dealer for some reason. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, there's just a nut, like... Even it, just doing the side quests, which is like why I will defend the side quests of this game what is... What will happen to Wedge's cats if they drop the yeah, plate, huh? right? Uh, this is why I still think the side quests in this game work very well, because even if the ones in Sector 7 are more tutorials and just, you know, getting used to combat and leveling up and stuff, uh, it makes you... it causes you to spend more time in 7 and get attached to the random NPCs and just, you know... We have going a part-time area, like, job there. That's important to us. Yeah, and and going through a, a more fully realized place where you know people are living their lives and talking and stuff. I think those side quests make the pe the pillar, you know, possibly getting destroyed, feel a lot more important. <laughs> mm -hmm. I will never forget where I first met Chadley. Oh my and that's god! That's why you're right. you can drop a small bit of plate just on that spot. That would be okay. <laughs> Yeah, like, who knows where Chadley is right now? Did he go back to Sector 7? He's, he's always on pilgrimage to go to where we are going, so... <laughs> switching up everyone's builds a little bit, just switching over to some, some ice materia. Um, we're also switching Aerith to the Carbuncle summon, Ooh. which we have not shown off yet. The, the yeah. last of the, the, the DLC summons. Almost there. Come on. Right. I sure hope no ghost skin in our way. Oh no. These lonely ghosts of children. So much child death. Yeah. Ah! Aerith! The kids that the Black Wing carries away have to live in the train graveyard forever and ever. Well, that sucks. Oh, okay. <laughs> Phew. Yeah, she just wasn't just immediately vaporized, thankfully. I mean, I could understand people being upset with that change from the original. Yeah. That, that seems like a pretty uh, big yeah. departure from the source. You're just trying to help. Aren't you? <sighs> I like their glowy orange Halloween stitching. Mm hmm. <sighs> Cyber ghosts. <You're> the <gasps> one who Heal this fool. Fuck him up with love. <laughs> love me a good cyber ghost. Are you ready? Well, are ya? I'm ready now! To move on to the next plane of existence! <laughs> Play me away, please! <laughs> We found you! Ah, uh, you got me. You ghost kids hey, got like ghost stick and hoop to play with, I hope. It's not just this. I'm ready. Oh, they got the ghost station four. Hmm. I'm ready. Hmm? See? Big old boots, even from a young age. Yeah. I Actually, oh, you know it would be really bizarre? Hmm. Aerith without the hair bow. I'm right here. Oh, yeah. Just a, just a naked ponytail. <laughs> Mom? We found you. 
We're gonna kick these ghosts' ass. I don't care if they're kids. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> I guess you did. Damn. This is a cool ass ghost. These ghosts do not half ass it. No. Let's go. So, this boss, uh, the cyber ghost, is Elagor. Mm -hmm. This was an enemy from the original game that was just a very rare random encounter you could get in the original game in the train graveyard. Your horse has a sword for a head. Yeah. Damn. This is a half horse, half robot ghost chariot man uh, with a single glowy red robot eye. Um, just like in the original, and it says in, in red text here, we can steal a weapon for Aerith from this dude. Uh, when I played the original, I was thinking maybe Elagor was going to show up as a boss, so I preemptively equipped the steel material in my first playthrough, thinking, like, is he going to have Aerith's weapon like in the original? And he totally does! <laughs> Yay! Yay! Uh, yeah, Elagor was just a rare random encounter, though. They they upgraded him to a, an actual boss fight this time around. Because uh, he's too cool of a design to waste. Look at this yeah. thing. Look at yeah, this fucking look at guy. Look at that. He's a cyber dude who cares enough about his horse. Like, oh, my horse broke his leg. Don't I don't, do I don't shoot that horse. I build it a wheelchair out of cyber magic. <laughs> I attach myself to him. We are one, me and my horse. Uh, it's, you can't really attack Elagor from the side because your attacks will bounce off of his wheels. They're just immune to attacks. And fucking first try, I stole the bladed staff for Aerith from him. Hell yes. Aerith's, Aerith's luck you. stat is getting pretty decent now. Look at that horse. Look at that horse. Majestic horse. <laughs> Love that horse. Give that horse a kiss. Kiss the horse. <laughs> Don't kiss the horse. <laughs> well, not from the side. It won't feel it. I kiss the horse from the front. I, th I mean, I think if you're going to kiss the horse from the front, you're going to get its sword head in your head. Oh, would you suggest I kiss the horse from behind? Because that never works, let me tell you. <laughs> just going to get a kick. So Elagor just does not take much damage from physical attacks. You really got to go into the magic, especially if you want to get him pressured. Something you got to be careful about is even if you stagger this dude, you cannot attack him from the side. You will still bounce off of him. <laughs> There we go. Cold horse. Come on, team. Time to end this. Drop that container on the horse. Oh man, it's just you just It really looks like it's meant for that purpose, right? Right? And it still reduces physical damage even when it's staggered, so I still want to lean into magic for that. This one's for you! Watch yourself. So it's my I do appreciate that there is probably a meeting, probably not a formal meeting, uh -huh. but there were people who discussed where to cut off the horse so we don't have to render horse genitals. <laughs> yeah, we're not Red Dead Redemption 2. Bounce right off. <laughs> Gotta deal with the barrier first. So once he starts flying, electrical spears will just randomly spawn right above your head to fall on you, so you gotta run out of the way of those. Cool, yeah, sure. He'll also just call down a huge fucking storm of uh, spears to rain down. And at the same time he's flying, he also casts Reflect on himself, because uh, the easiest way to knock him back down to the ground is with magic, which is why uh, I also equipped Aerith with that uh, that subversion materia, so she can... Mm -hmm. It gives her the Breach spell. It takes two ATB to use, but uh, it will remove Shield, Reflect, Barrier, and Mana Barrier off of any enemies that got that. Ooh, that's good. That's a good thing to pretty not good. do. <gasps> yeah, the easiest ways to not come down is uh, you got if you hit him with Wind Spell, since he's up in the air, that'll bring him down pretty quick. One more shot. Also, we're gonna summon Carbuncle. Mm -hmm. I've been dying to see you. He's got a big forehead. Hey, buddy. Oh my goodness, look at your noggin. You must be smart. He's got a lot of brains in there. 
So, uh, Carbuncle is the best of the three DLC summons. He doesn't stick around for long, but he's got three abilities, all that take two gauge. And he can either cast Protect or Mana Ward on the entire party, or Emerald Light, which casts Haste on the entire party. Ooh. So everyone's gauges will be filling up super fast. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. Everybody's got wheels now. Oh, yeah. Uh, and yeah, he can just be really useful because, like, we have no real access to the Haste status effect except for those uh, really rare Celerus items we can steal from certain e enemies. Mm -hmm. um, so being able to put Haste on everybody all at once is great. And when you're not commanding Carbuncle to do anything, he'll just randomly heal party members for you. You've got this. Okay. Let's go. So it looks like Baby Glaceon here is, is just for, for buffs and such. Yeah. Not really doing any attacks. He's just a support summon. Uh, but his ultimate, uh, when he leaves, is really good. Diamond Dazzle will both fully heal everyone's HP, and if anybody in your party is dead, they also get revived in full health. Nice. You're up. I'm coming. I, I used him once or twice on hard mode in this game, where it's like my whole party was about to wipe, <laughs> and he did a full res on everybody. What a good friend! Hey, you ready? Yeah, the other thing Elagor can do is he uh, he shoots eye lasers. Mm -hmm. um, both one that sweeps and one in this, now that we're in the second phase, one that he's, just... He's got the stingy eyes. Yeah, yeah he shoots yeah. his Space Ripper stingy eyes directly at people sometimes. And if you get hit by that, you will be put to sleep and you will be silenced. <laughs> oh, fuck you. Did you know you can cut a, a, a laser in half with a sword? Can now. Uh, he's got that Winds of Gehenna move. Uh, he sucks people close to him, then blows them away. Uh, it also pushes the uh, the big crate in the middle of the arena around, so if you're near that, you'll get hit by, hit by it and get hurt by, by the <laughs> physics objects that are getting pushed around. Um, his wheels are weak now, so you can actually destroy those and stagger him that way. He starts just driving circles around the arena, though, but uh, Cloud's Triple Slash, because it homes, so is pretty fast uh -huh. and covers a good amount of distance, you can actually catch up with him with that move. We've also got Aerith's uh, level 2 limit break here, Planet's Protection. Uh, it casts shield on everybody for about, like, a minute and a half, so everyone's just uh, now immune to physical damage right now. Nice. There's a good amount of magic attacks from him still, but getting run over by him or getting hit by his spear, that's physical, so... Oh, by the way, the text description for Elagor didn't point out. Uh, he is uh, a ghost that is comprised of the, the all the negative emotions that were felt in the train graveyard. Mm. And he uh, traps other people and turns them into ghosts so he can feed off of their energy. <laughs> He's a bad ghost. So if you ever got off the train... You know, you're coming home from work, mm -hmm. and you took a sh shortcut through uh, uh, the train graveyard when you have just had a real shitty day. Yeah. You're responsible for Elgor. Yeah. Hold on, guys. We're coming. And you can go to hell! That's where I'm from, actually. I live there! <laughs> That's where I was headed! I love she just fucking kicks this dude out of frame, and that's the last you see of Elagor. She <laughs> kicks that go right. cyber ghost horse so hard, he's just gone. Now you can tell Marlene that all the dead kids <laughs> are, are happy. It's that ghost. Look, we have the very pressing, urgent manner of saving Sector 7, but we also, by accident, kind of, on our way, saved and freed the souls of dozens of children. Mm-hmm. Wow. They were about to get so much more company, though. It wouldn't be so bad. Oh. Uh. So long. Look at all them points of light. How many kids died in this place? Fuck. <laughs> yeah. There is a problem here. If each one of those is a soul, holy shit. 
Are we sure it was just the train graveyard and that we're not just Elagor wasn't feeding off the souls of every dead child in the history of the world? Stop letting your kids play in the train graveyard. It's called the train graveyard. <laughs> what if I think we need a little bit of a brand change here. Just call it the child graveyard. <laughs> then I think it's people more are, accurate. Yeah. We made it. I just can't stop thinking about what Don Corneo said back there. <laughs> uh-huh.